In today's video, it's Chelsea that we look to go and rebuild in an at least slightly realistic manner as we think about the players that they are likely to bring in this summer, as well as those players that are likely to leave the club. Chelsea, they need a rebuild because... Well, they've got no defence left after the likes of Christensen left the club and, of course, Rudiger moving on to Real Madrid. They need to reinforce in that area. And, of course, there's this background thing going on with the new takeover and Todd Bowley coming into the club. Will he go and splash the cash in his first summer at the Halm at Chelsea? Will they look to bring in some big names? That's what we're going to think about in today's video. Let's Let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another realistic rebuild on the channel. Today, we're going to be focusing on Chelsea because out of all of the clubs who I was thinking about, about who needs an actual rebuild this summer, Chelsea has to be pretty high up that list. They have lost Andreas Christensen, as I mentioned already in the video. They've lost Antonio Rudiger to Real Madrid. That is a gaping wide hole in their defence. It means straight away off the bat, they're going to need to reinforce. They're going to need to rebuild and with a new chairman at the helm and the takeover having gone through Todd Bowley is now that that lead man that at the top of the consortium with all of this going on I think it really does make for a fascinating summer at Chelsea and today we're going to dive straight into that get really into it in a little bit of depth as I think about who we're going to bring in uh, in terms of transfers and also who we might even want to sell on to raise a little bit of money before we even do any of that we'll need to think about some contracts and specifically Cesar Azpilicueta is he going to move on he's been linked with Barcelona as well but with the whole thing going on at Barcelona I've seen reports where they need to raise 500 million pounds this summer would you like to see a video where we try and do that let me know in the comments if that is something you do fancy but I'm thinking about Azpilicueta I guess we'll get straight into it now I'm thinking that I'm going to offer Cesar Azpilicueta a brand new contract and then I think the rest of these players whose contracts are expiring I might just let leave the club let's Let's dive into it properly. Okay, before we do dive into it properly, a quick reminder to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. We are so, so close. As Pep Guardiola once famously said, we are close. We are so close to 20,000 subscribers. He didn't say that part, but still, you understand what I'm saying, right? Help me out, get me to 20K, and I'll love you forever. Also, if you do enjoy the videos, make sure you do leave a like and leave me comments down below. I am still listening to all of your suggestions on who we should go and realistically rebuild next. And also, I want to hear your feedback. Chelsea, fans specifically do you agree with the choices i'm going to make in this in this video because you know let's have a discussion let's chat about it let's let's get into it properly then okay for this then let's start in the way that we usually do in this type of video in these realistic rebuilds and that is thinking about the outgoings which players are likely to leave chelsea this summer we've already seen rudiger he has moved on to real madrid in real life he's actually still on a free contract here look but i've let his contract run out he's going to move to not Real Madrid, according to this. PSG, Bayern Munich, maybe Bayern Munich is German. I reckon that's what's going to happen in FM. Rudiger has moved on and as has Andreas Christensen, who is also a free transfer on this particular save file. Those two are definitely leaving the club. There are one or two others that I think are going to also move on this summer. To kind of go through that, I've set the squad up in the type of system that Thomas Tuchel played last season for the majority. Of course, this is very fluid. And actually, there may be some positions that you could kind of tweak on here. I'm well aware of that. And actually, it might look different in terms of in possession and out of possession. I'm aware of that. But the general the general gist of it is here, I feel like. Jorginho, you know, you could have your two midfielders alongside each other in here. But I like, I put Jorginho in as a slightly deeper lying playmaker. Werner, of course, sometimes they play a little bit more narrow and then move outwards. I've started Werner on the left here. That could, of course, be Pulisic. That could, of course be Havertz in behind if you wanted to change it and start Lukaku but you get my general idea I'm going to go through these players because I think these ones who are starting here are likely to stay at the club this summer we'll go through the Mendy will continue to be the first choice goalkeeper I think that's pretty safe to say at this stage he's had a really good couple of years at Chelsea now he's definitely the better keeper out of him and Kepa I do wonder what happens with Kepa I've put him on the bench here as the backup goalkeeper I don't actually expect him to leave this summer mainly because I don't really see where he goes he's on big wages and I feel like his stock is pretty low it wouldn't be a good time for Chelsea to sell um, I don't know when a good time would be but of course he costs so much money 71 million pounds of course he was the most expensive goalkeeper of all time when he signed was he is he still that he might well still be that i'm not quite sure but mendy's the best goalkeeper at the club he will start next year in defense trevor chalaba is going to stay at the club i don't know if he's going to be a starter we talked about the fact that they are going to need to sign at center backs here at chelsea this summer chalaba will be one of them who stays there tiago silva likewise will be one of them 
Of course, he's not getting any younger. 37 years old now, but probably their best center back. So he will still be here. And as you can see, I've left I've left a hole in their defense at left center back. It's an Antonio Rudiger shaped hole. They are going to need to bring in at least one center back. As you'll see as we go through today's video, I think they might well bring in at least two center backs here. Maybe somebody who can play center back and maybe left back cover as well. But they are definitely, definitely going to be needing to bring in a centre back. They are heavily linked with Jules Koundé, uh, as well as a few others. Milenkovic, I've seen. I've seen Romagnoli. And uh, we'll get into a few of those as we talk about the incomings. If we go forward then in front of the defence, we'll have Chilwell from the left-hand side, Reese James from the right-hand side. As Piliqueta can also play here. And actually, we've seen... Uh, Reese James come and play at centre back in here too. They'd like to swap those two over and likewise the other way around like this. So I think we'll see both of those. James though is their best right wing back. I think Chilwell is uh, going to be a big year for him next year. Coming back from that injury, you'd expect him to start more games. It was Marcus Alonso who played lots of games at left wing back last year. I'm not quite sure that Tuchel really fancies Marcus Alonso. I think he's quite effective when he does play, but I have a feeling that they might even try and ship him out this summer. I just feel like his races may be run. He doesn't have the pace. I feel like Chelsea fans maybe agree with that. Let me know what you think about Marcus Alonso. But I do wonder if we'll see the end of Marcus Alonso as a Chelsea player this summer. And maybe they'll look to bring in somebody to replace him. Maybe somebody who can play centre-back as well and play both sides. You've seen that they've kind of done that sort of setup with Azpilicueta and James on the right-hand side. Will he try and mirror it on the other side? Possibly, I wonder. Jorginho, I put in this deep position here. Of likewise, you could have Kante playing as playing as more of a DM. I'm not sure that actually N'Golo Kante is a DM. Maybe that's just something that he kind of gets labelled as when he's not really that. He's more box to box, I think. We've also got Kovacic who can come into this midfield too. We've also got Ruben Loftus Cheek who can come into this midfield too. They're pretty well stocked in midfield, and they're going to be more stocked in midfield when Conor Gallagher comes back from his loan. He was so successful at Crystal Palace, and I do wonder if he's going to get a chance next year at Chelsea I think he probably deserves to have a chance at Chelsea I suppose it will also be a big case of does his preseason go well does Tuchel see what he wants to see from him otherwise if he's not quite there in Tuchel's opinion maybe we'll see him do another loan he's already talked about how happy he was at, at Palace and how he was sad to be leaving them he did this big goodbye so I don't expect he'll be back there again but maybe just maybe another loan but I do think he'll be around the squad next year I think I'd like to see Conor Gallagher playing in this Chelsea side a little bit more maybe long term as this sort of Kante replacement. There has been some talk of Kante leaving the club this summer. Not for me. I don't see it happening. I think Manchester United were one of the clubs linked. I just don't see N'Golo Kante leaving Chelsea this summer. I don't think any team wants to lose a player like N'Golo Kante. So I can't see it happening. I know he's 31 and actually it's getting to that age now where you maybe want to shift on players like this. But I think Kante stays for at least another year. Likewise, Jorginho, they're both now 30 plus. Maybe one of them will go. I do wonder. I don't think it's as likely as some of the other exits that we're talking about. But I do just wonder that if they are needing to fund a big transfer, maybe a Declan Rice who is continuing to be linked with Chelsea because of his Chelsea roots. I do wonder if it's Jorginho or Kante that moves on. I'm not, I'm not sure I quite see it at this stage. In front of those midfield two, we have got Havertz, who plays as a false nine fairly often. Lukaku playing some of those games too. Sometimes I think we'll see more of an inside forward on this side. Maybe that's a position they do need to strengthen. We've seen lots of Ziyech coming from, probably coming from the other side for Ziyech cutting in on his left foot. But we have seen Werner from this side. We have seen Pulisic from this side. This Chelsea team, this Chelsea squad, I think people forget how well fancied this Chelsea squad was before the season. There were lots of people talking about once Lukaku came in, it was the final piece of the jigsaw. People were talking about Chelsea being a title challenger. People picked them as their title, title winners last year after winning the Champions League, of course. It didn't quite happen. They ended up quite a long way behind Liverpool and Manchester City, who ultimately won that title. I think the aim for next year is to get a lot closer, if possible. I think they maybe would have been a lot closer if... Maybe if they didn't shift their attentions a little bit once it became clear that they weren't going to catch them. I think their foot did come off the pedal a little bit in the Premier League. Maybe as they did reach the Champions League, I think it was the quarterfinals where they lost to Real Madrid. They also did then reach those two domestic finals too where they lost to Liverpool on penalties in both. A little bit unlucky that. So this squad is not a bad squad. With a few additions to it, I think it can get a lot closer to Liverpool. And we'll talk about those additions next. Before we do that, though, let's talk about any other outgoings. As I mentioned, I think Marcus Alonso might well leave this summer. I think he's somebody that I might see if I can shift on in this particular save. I do wonder about Callum Hudson-Odoi. Has his ship sailed now? 
Do they need him in this? I just feel like he hasn't quite fulfilled his potential. I remember when he was very close to leaving to go to Bayern Munich. Is there a move for him this summer? I do just wonder about him. I think we might see one of Hudson Adoy, Werner, or Ziyech leave. I think Werner's probably the least likely to go out of those, but Ziyech will cut Hudson Adoy. Out of the three, I think it's more likely to be Hudson Adoy. Again, it might just depend if a bid comes in for him. Chelsea might have to think about it, but. I think I might have a look and explore the possibility of moving on Hudson Adoy in this save today. If we go through, there's a lot. Look how big this squad is. There's loads of players in here. I think Baba Rachman will see leave. Batshuay, I think, will see leave. Emerson, when he comes back from his loan, will probably leave the club. Kennedy, Ross Barkley, I think his race is run. He will leave. Clark Salter will also go. Broha's an interesting one. Will he have another loan? I don't think he's going to be involved with Chelsea next year. I guess also if there's a big bid for a permanent, I think he might go for that as well. Uh, Ampadu, I don't know where he stands in this Chelsea squad. They do need centre-backs. I think he's played in midfield a lot for Venezia, but still... If they need him, maybe he'll be back into the fold. I think pre-season will be one for him as well. Billy Gilmore, not quite sure if there's a space in that midfield for him yet. Maybe another loan. Saul will go back to Atletico Madrid. Matt Miazga, I think, will be sold. And then Tiemi Bakayoko, I think, has still got two years left on his loan spell at Milan. So I think he will still be there. That's the squad. Those are the outgoings. What I'm going to go and do is see how many of them I can actually sell. See how much money I can bring in, as well as making some signings, which I think is what we're all here to see. I will see you after I've been very busy in the transfer market. I'll see you then. Okay, so I have made some transfers. Of course I have. This is the whole point of this video, but... I spent a lot of money. Now, I was trying to be realistic, so I'm just going to do a little bit of a disclaimer here. I maybe have got a little bit carried away. I've gone for players that I think Chelsea are definitely going to be inquiring about, definitely thinking about as players that they could potentially bring to the club. But maybe instead of all of these things happening that I'm going to go through here, maybe actually in real life we'll see maybe a selection of them. So just bear that in mind as we go through them. I don't know how realistic this realistic rebuild is in those terms. Let me know in the comments down below if you think these things will actually happen. I always want to hear from you. But let's start with the players that we have brought in then. And as I mentioned, I think they're all likely to be on Chelsea's radar at the very least. We start with two players brought in before it ticks over to next summer. Jules Koundé was the first player that I went to look for. Of course, Chelsea need a centre-back. Jules Koundé, I think, is the most likely to actually come and join in real life. He's been heavily linked now for a long time. It seems like Tuchel is a big fan of his. He's a very very good center back and i think chelsea would be correct to go and look for him and i think he will join he does have a release clause of i think was it 58 million pounds i decided to try and keep costs down so it's 55 million pound but i think it's a lot less than that initially and up front to allow me to spend money on other players too but jules Koundé, first one through the door i feel like that one's a pretty realistic one i think it's actually going to happen next is a left back or a left wing back actually a very thomas tuchel left wing back as well with the Borussia dortmund links of course too rafael guerrero i haven't seen so many links to this one but i was just looking at it and it just makes it makes so much sense i think left back is a place where well left wing back actually if you think about the tuchel system it's a position where they are going to need to make a signing especially if marcus alonso is sold on as i have actually done spoilers we'll come to that in a second and also rafa guerrero has only got one year left on his Borussia dortmund deal he can play anywhere down this left hand side which could be useful too maybe even in midfield according to fm here but a left wing back i think is where he's likely to play i think I think this one just makes sense and as i mentioned i've not seen too many links to it in real life but it just makes so much sense on paper that maybe i could just maybe see it happening guerrero and kunde are the first two players in let's jump over to some of the sales that i've done before the season ticked over here the main one being ross barkley i think his time at chelsea is probably up now i know we got a few games towards the end of last season but i think if they get a bit of any significant amount of money here i've sold him to leicester for 5.75 million pounds i think barkley is likely to leave those two players in then one big sale out here as well as some loans chelsea squad they love a loan don't they there are so many players to loan out in this chelsea squad let's move through to the next slot then and as you can see i've spent quite a lot of money here 125 million pounds this is where i say take it with a little bit of a pinch of salt dembele is the first one on a free transfer from barcelona this one i can kind of see happening just because 
I think the new owner wants to make a bit of a marquee signing. I think Usman Dembele makes a lot of sense as that marquee signing. There are a lot of links in the press. I think actually they are going to want an attacking player, one that can play on both sides, cut in from both sides. He's very either footed. His injury track record is, of course, not very good. And he's had a few problems whilst at Barcelona. It hasn't really happened to him, but he was very good towards the end of last season. And Barcelona don't necessarily want to lose him. But with his contract running out, I think Dembele is going to want to move on now. And I think Chelsea could be a decent destination for him. I just see maybe this one happening because of that marquee signing feeling around the club that they're going to want to make a good impression. Nothing will turn a fan base against you more than not spending money if you've promised to spend money. And I just feel like as a new owner, Todd Bowley is going to want to put his hand in his pocket at least a little bit. Even if by all reports, it seems like Todd Bowley's approach and model at Chelsea is going to be a little bit more like FSG at Liverpool rather than the free spending Abramovich era. I feel, I just feel like he's going to want to bring in one player or two players or a few players just to show off that actually he is willing to spend money for Chelsea and he, he is the right man to take them forward. So I just wonder, Dembele, I think it could happen, you know. Next, I'm actually going to skip Declan Rice here and we're going to come back to him because we're going to go to Josco Guardiola first of all. Now, I wanted to sign a left-sided centre-back and I'll show you these players in the squad in the Tactic 2. I just wonder about Guardiola. He's had a really good season at Leipzig. Well, he's had a season where he's bedded in at Leipzig a little bit more. He can play this left-hand side left-back role too. Maybe just about a left wing-back. But Guardiola, I was looking at the left-sided defenders. He just kind of made sense to me and I thought... Do you know what? Has he been linked with Chelsea? So I did a few searches and he has been linked with Chelsea. I could see this type of deal being done. And that's why I've gone for him as one of our centre-backs. So it's himself and Koundé as the two centre-backs that I've decided to bring in. I wonder, let me know what you think about that one in the comments down below. I looked at a few others as well, like Romagnoli, whose contract was running out. He's signed a new contract in FM. So I thought, Do you know what? We'll think of something maybe a little bit more outside the box. And Josco Guardiol is that guy. Will they sign two centre-backs this summer? I think they probably will, but... We will find out, won't we? And then the final signing that I have made before we go through some of these sales, as you can see, I've sold a lot of players for a lot of money here, 111 million pounds. The final one is maybe not so realistic, especially if they've already signed Dembele and Koundé as well as some of the other players too. But I just feel like there might be something in the Declan Rice thing. Is it this summer? Maybe next summer, actually, with I think Jorginho's got one year left on his contract. I think Kante's coming towards the, the end of his contract, too. They are going to need a centre midfielder. And these Declan Rice links, with him coming through the Chelsea youth team, with his friendship with Mason Mount, there are so many things in this that just kind of make sense. I don't necessarily think they're going to do this this summer, but I do wonder if we will see Declan Rice ending up at Chelsea in the future. It just seems, seems a little bit inevitable. So I've done it in this save. I think actually the side that we can put together is quite exciting. Just to go through some of these sales then, if I sort them by value, I have sold Callum Hudson-Odoi. I do think that one of him and Ziyech and Werner, I think one of those three will be sold. I think it's most likely to be Hudson-Odoi. He sold to Leipzig here for £33 million, almost like a trade with Guardiola actually. Broha, I've moved on to Emerson. I talked about Marcus Alonso being moved on. I sold him. Andrin, again, some of these youngsters not necessarily going to be sold, especially the ones that they feel are going to have a big future. I think Chelsea will do what they do and loan them out. However, in this save, just to make sure I had the money to do some signings like Declan Rice, which however realistic you think they are, I've sold a few of them, like Matson as well as another one. Batchway, I think, will leave the club. He's gone to Lille on this one. Miazka, Baba Rachman, Clark Salter. These ones are on free now. Kennedy, Billy Gilmore did go on loan to Cologne as well, which rhymes. I like that. Those are the transfers then. Let's have a quick look at how this looks in, in Tuchel's system or a version of Tuchel's 4-3-3 system. I think this side here gets a lot closer to those top two teams in the Premier League next season. You've got Mendy in goal. You've got our defence here. Will it be Azpilicueta? Will it be Chalaba? Will it be... In fact, let me change a few of these. It'll probably be Koundé from this side, sorry. It's going to be Mendy, Koundé, Thiago Silva, maybe Guardiola from this side, maybe Koundé from the left-hand side, and it'll be Chalaba from the right-hand side if Guardiola's not quite ready. You can maybe have Azpilicueta, who I re-signed. The defence looking a little bit like this. Reese James from the right, Chilwell from the left, and then just imagine Declan Rice holding down this midfield. Again, I'm not sure he's necessarily a defensive midfielder. He's a little bit more box to box than that. So maybe you could put him in here. You can maybe go central midfielder, defend or something like this. But do you know what? I'm going to put him in here now as a defensive midfielder with Kante ahead of him. That could also be Kovacic. That could also be Conor Gallagher if you wanted to go a little bit more youthful. Mount in behind, maybe Havertz up front, Dembele from the left hand side. You know all of the options. And then maybe, I suppose, if it was Declan Rice coming into that midfield, 
maybe that's when you see Jorginho leaving the club. You see, he's only got one year left on his contract. How long does Kante's contract run, actually? We'll check that one as well. Yeah, his is also up next summer. So that's maybe why I could see a Declan Rice transfer happening. I'm not quite sure. Now, what I am going to do in today's video is very quickly at the end of this, we'll go and do a one year sim. I know loads of you have been asking for this in the comments, so I will oblige. I didn't do it in the Manchester United realistic rebuild because I just thought they'd win the league. And I don't think Manchester United are going to win the league next year. So I didn't do it in that one. Then I didn't do it in the Arsenal. One. But you know what? We'll do it in the Chelsea realistic rebuild just to find out where they finish in this Premier League table. I'll stick it in this tactic too. And we'll just find out how they do. I'll be back in May when we finish one season of simulations. Okay, I'm back and the season has been completed. I've not looked at this yet. Where do you think Chelsea would have finished then under with that tactic set up? I haven't actually tested that tactic in game, by the way. So that might hold this back a little bit in this simulation with these new players. Who knows? We're going to find out where they finish. Let's find out. Chelsea finished third. Okay, so the same as real life this season, actually. Were they closer to the top? I guess they were closer to the to the top they were just six points off the uh, title winners which was Manchester City and it was Liverpool in second as well Aston Villa have finished fourth there then United where's Arsenal where's Spurs Spurs have finished 10th that's interesting Forest go back down then Brighton and Palace Newcastle just about avoiding relegation but that's not important Chelsea have finished in third position Romelu Lukaku has finished second in the goal scoring charts as well, which means he's come back into this side when in real life he's been in and out, hasn't he? Let's have a look at the uh, the player stats here then. We've got Lukaku, 35 goals in 49 games, all comps. Mason Mount there, look. Chilwell, Declan Rice. This is pretty much the team that we set up. You see how many times each of these players played. Dembele only playing 19 games. As Poliqueta played 36. So did Jorginho as well, look, 36 games. And just going through. Is there any new players in here? Okay, I've just spotted a new player. Darwin Nunes is a Chelsea player at this stage. They must have signed him in January, which is very interesting. I've also noticed that Havertz isn't in the starting lineup here. I wonder, he, I mean, he did play, he only played 10 games actually, Havertz. 27 off the bench, but only 10 starts, which I'd expect him to play more games than that. But third place, how do they do it in the Cups? They got to the semi-final of the FA Cup. They lost to Palace, which was actually the semi-final this year, wasn't it? They lost an extra time to Palace there. They went out in the Champions League first knockout round to Milan. That would be disappointing if they went out to them in that round. League Cup, not great then. Quarterfinals, they lost to Leicester. I don't think that's a particularly good season. They did finish nicely, actually. So a third place finish for Chelsea with this rebuild. Let me know what you thought of those signings. Let me know what you think of Chelsea's summer business that might be coming up. I want to hear from you in those comments down below. And if you've enjoyed today's video, make sure you do leave a like on it as well, because it does help the video to be pushed out for a bigger audience. And that might mean more subs and we might hit 20k, which would be very, very nice. Thank you very much for watching today, though. I hope you have a lovely, lovely rest of your day. I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye.